Guru Nation, long day, CRA life, but I learned a few things today. I didn't learn, but I got some insights into how maybe I can help you if you're new in the industry at a site level or maybe new as a CRA. Who knows? Whatever the case may be, there are a few things you got to keep in mind, okay? The informed consent, the informed consent process, uh, the authorization to release medical records form, otherwise known as the HIPAA, and some states, the Bill of Rights, like in California, there's a Bill of Rights. So these things are important to have documented and they're important that the site follow a system. It's important that the, I talk about systems a lot on my Patreon channel, but I, I talk about systems a lot on these videos as well because it's important for the sites to have a system and that they follow the system. So anytime an informed consent is given to a subject, not only is it enough for the subject to sign the form and the coordinators or the PI or whomever's delegated to do the same, but there needs to be a description or a checklist or something documenting the process of consent. So who, okay, where did they meet? Who discussed the informed consent with them? What did they say? Specific questions. Uh, why are they doing the study? Did they understand the study? That's a process of consent. It has to be documented somehow, even if it's scribbled on a progress note, or it's on a checklist, or it's typed. I mean, it doesn't matter how, it just has to be done. Same thing with the authorization to release medical records. If you're going to give the authorization to release medical records for one of your patients, you should give it to all of your patients, especially when the patients come from the same place, the same referral sources. So that's one of the things I noticed. Um, another thing I noticed is watch out for those sneaky visit windows because um, sometimes certain assessments have to be done within a window of the study. And so, for example, collecting labs or doing an ECG or even just the actual visit itself needs to fall within a certain visit window from the previous study visit. So these kind of things are important. You got to read the protocol. You got to really understand the protocol. You got to read the footnotes to make sure you understand this. All in all, these are very common findings at uh, monitoring visits, but they could turn into bigger, more serious things. They could turn into deviations. Matter of fact, they, they might be deviations. They could turn into things that require CAPA, corrective action, preventative action. Um, and they don't look very good during audits. So make sure if you do discover these things at your site or as a CRA, make sure that you do training and that you document training and that you put note to files to document the rationale for what the issue was and how it was corrected or even go as far as doing a corrective action preventative action plan. So just a few things that uh, I picked up today and I pick up a lot when I go monitor or when I'm at the site itself. And I'll share more of these with you later on. Take care.